welcome. Ooh, looks like it's time for me to get some new dance moves, isn't it? Oh, I need to up my game on that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I am Lee Chase. I'm the adult program coordinator with Literacy Mid South. We are a nonprofit organization in Memphis, Tennessee. We offer one on one tutoring for adults. So if you're 18 and over and you need assistance with reading, or you are looking to learn or learn or improve your English skills, um, we can we can assist you with that. Uh, we can get you the assistance that you need. So you or if there's anybody you know uh, who needs those services as well, then we can get those for you. So uh, there's some information on uh, the screen, and I will share it at the end of how you can contact us um, if you or anybody you know uh, would like assistance with reading or you'd like to learn or improve your English. So, all right, so with that out of the way, let's jump right in. It is Monday, October, gosh, what is today? Today is October 5th of 2020, um, and it's time for yet another week of literacy lunch. with Lee, Literacy Lunch with Lee. So if you are brand new to our program, Literacy Lunch with Lee is an English lesson. It's an English lesson. We do it every Monday and Wednesday at noon Central Standard Time right here on Literacy Mid-South's Facebook page. Um, if for some reason you jump in late or you miss the lesson, they are all archived. So you can go to the Literacy Mid-South page. You can find all the previous uh, Literacy Lunch with Lee videos there. Um, so please do. Please do that. There's lots of great opportunities for, uh, for practice there with vocabulary, conversation. Um, so we've been uh, doing these episodes since... Gosh, the end of April. So there's a lot of great, a uh, lot of great episodes available to you. Uh, so please go to the library um, on our page, find those, um, take advantage of all those, all those lessons that are there. Um, if you are not in the Memphis area, I'd love to know where you are watching from. So leave a comment. Uh, let me know that. Uh, please like and share, like and share these videos. Um, if there's anybody out there who you think needs these and does not have access, let them know they're here. Let them know they're here because there's, whether you're learning or improving English or you're working on reading, there's a lot of great vocabulary and conversation pieces that you can use on, on these. So please make sure you're doing that. Um, if there is anything you'd like to see a lesson done on, a subject that I have not covered already, let me know. Put it in the comments. Let's do it. We will make it happen. All right, so uh, we have the past couple of weeks we have been doing um, idioms, and we're gonna keep. We're gonna do another week of of idioms, of idioms. So idioms being uh, phrases that you hear that do not have the literal meaning. Um, so you'll hear a phrase, you'll be like, "Oh my goodness, why would anybody want to do that?" Well, that's not actually what it means. So there are so many idioms in the English language. Uh, they are very confusing um, if you do not know what they mean. And we as Americans, English speakers, we use them all the time. So um, here are, we're going to go through some more idioms this week. Hopefully you'll get more comfortable and familiar with these. So let's get, let's get started. Let's, let's have some fun. All right, first one we're going to look at today is to keep under one's hat. To keep under one's hat. So that means you're, you keep something a secret. You keep something a secret if you are keeping it under your hat. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's one of those strange things. Yeah, we, we've, I know we've done some other ones about deceiving or... Or keeping secrets um, so there are quite a few that have that but one one method you can use is you're saying yeah that, that, that you're keeping it under your hat you know so so yeah it is a secret that you are keeping 
uh, if you're keeping something concealed or hidden, you could say that you have something up one sleeve. So, yeah, up one sleeve. So it is concealed or hidden is another English word for concealed. So that would mean yes that you have it have it up up one sleeve. So it's so it's up your sleeve. So. Um, yeah, it's mostly used in cards, as you can see from the picture when you hide a card, but it could be for anything that you are keeping hidden. Um, so say, um, say, say you've got a surprise you want to give for somebody. You could say that you have something, something fun hidden up your sleeve. So, yeah, that is that is a common expression in English. So this is one that I that is used a lot. I hear this one a lot. Um, but it is uh, to knock someone's socks off. To knock someone's socks off. It means that you enthuse or in excite. Could mean that you impress them. You know, you impress someone um, if you knock their socks off. If you knock their socks off. So, um, yeah, so knock someone's socks off. So it means you're going to impress them. Um, you're going to excite them, you know. Um, uh, could be a presentation you're giving. You're going to be like, this presentation is so good, it's going to knock your socks off. Or, in my case here, this English lesson is going to be so much fun, it is going to knock your socks off. So, um, yeah. All right, this is one that's used quite a bit as well. Um, if you hear somebody say that they are in stitches, in stitches, it means that they are laughing very hard. They are laughing very hard. They are in stitches. In stitches. So um, it's almost kind of like that, uh, you know, where you're laughing so hard, you kind of like, you, you kind of like double over. You know, you're laughing. You're holding your stomach because you're laughing so hard. Um, you are in stitches. You are in stitches. Oh my goodness, that movie was so funny, it had me in stitches. You know, so yeah, in stitches, you're laughing very hard. Um, yeah. Another term we use, if, you, if you're really dressed up, you're dressed really nice, you could be wearing a, a nice dress or a tuxedo or a suit, you know, like a shirt and tie. Basically the opposite of how I am dressed right now right now, then you might say that you are dressed to the nines. You are dressed to the nines means you are dressed elegantly. You are dressed elegantly if you are dressed to the nines. Dressed to the nines, yes. So yeah, you are dressed very nice. You're, you're going out for a, a nice night on the town. Well, maybe not so much right now, I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you're going usually to like a fancy restaurant, you're going to the theater, um, you are going to be dressed to the nines. Dressed to the nines. All right, um, another common expression we use um, if you have something defective. It's mostly used, I think, when talking about like if you have a, a car that's like falling apart. You know, like a car that keeps breaking down or is giving you a lot of trouble, then you are driving a lemon. You're driving a lemon. So, yeah, count it as something defective. It is a lemon. Yes, it is a lemon. You are, you are driving a lemon. So, yeah, that's a, that's a very. So, if you ever hear somebody describe their car as a lemon, yeah, it's because the car is no good. It's breaking down constantly. All right, next up. So one that if you're if you're out of danger, ooh, hopefully this won't be happening. But if for some reason you've been in danger or in a very intense situation, and then you get out of it, then you might say that you are out of the woods. Out of the woods. Yeah, it means that you are finally out of danger. Yes, you are out of the woods. Out of the woods. Ooh. So yeah, you've been in an intense situation, you finally get to safety, you're like, oh, whew, finally out of the woods. Or, ew, if you're still in the situation, you say, ooh, we're not out of the woods yet. Ooh, but yes, hopefully, 
Yes, you are out of danger. You are you are out of the woods. Out of the woods. All right, this is another very, very commonly used phrase. Um, you'll hear somebody say this to somebody who's in a bad mood. Um, it's probably a very popular Monday morning phrase, I would imagine. Um, but if you talk about that you get up on the wrong side of the bed, you get up on the wrong side of the bed, or you could say woke up on the wrong side of the bed, either one, woke up or get up. Uh, means that you wake up in a bad mood. Wake up in a bad mood. So you get up on the wrong side of the bed. Yep, then you have you have woken up in a bad mood that day. So yeah, if you if you're grumpy, you know, cranky, um, somebody will look at you and say, "Whew, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning," or "You got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning." So yeah, getting up on the wrong side. Hopefully nobody got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Um, I sure hope not. But there are days like that. All right. Um, if you are out on a limb or you go out on a limb, you are in a risky, uh, risky position. You are in a risky position. So you are putting yourself in a risky uh, position. Usually for somebody else, you know, you, you're doing something for somebody else that, that could have potential risk or harm to you, so you will tell them, I'm going out on a limb for you here. Um, I'm going out on a limb for you here by doing this. So, yeah, out on a limb, you are in a risky position. All right, a couple of more today. Um... This is not a good one. Um, this is definitely one of the unfortunate ones that we uh, that, that we do use, but it is important to know if you ever do uh, uh, unfortunately have to hear it. I certainly hope not, but in case you do, um, this is a popular idiom used for if you are to get fired or dismissed from your job. Ooh, if you're fired or dismissed, then they may say that you get the X. Get the X. Say that with me. I know that X is a tricky word, so get the X. The X. Almost sounds like if you're doing a CKS sound, the X sound. So X. X. Yeah. Um, X. You got to get, yeah, the X. So to get the X, yes, it means that you are being dismissed or fired. Ugh. I hope to not hear that anybody has had to get the X. But yes, that is a commonly used phrase. This is not a fun one either, although unfortunately, as as people, it is just something that that does happen. Often, often we we spend more money than we actually have. It's unfortunately it's a way of life. It happens when you get credit cards, um, when you get in debt. You know, when you get in debt due to having credit cards or taking out loans. Could be either one. Uh, then you are in the hole. In the hole means that you are in debt. In debt. So you are in the hole. In the hole. So, um, yeah, you, 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 you get a loan for, say, $20,000, then you're going to say, Whew, I'm in the hole, $20,000. You know, I got to, because you got to pay it back. You know, that's why you're in the hole, because that is money that you owe that you're going to have to pay. Eesh. Yeah, no fun, but uh, but it is old. All right, well, any other idioms that you think are interesting or we have not gone over yet, put them in the comments section. Let me know some idioms in the English language that you like. Or if you've heard them, you don't know what they mean. Yeah, put them in the comments section. Uh, we can discuss them. Like I said, if you're not in the Memphis area, please, please, please let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to like and share these videos, uh, anybody out there who might need them that does not have access or does not know that I am doing these. Please, please share them. Um, I am here for you, so I want to make sure that you are getting lessons that are helpful to you. So, 
if there's a lesson that you would like to see done that I have not done yet, a certain subject um, that you would like to see covered, let me know. I will do a lesson on it. Um, I'm here for you, so please let me know how I can best be of assistance to you. Ah, and of course, and of course, if you do need assistance or you know someone who needs assistance with English, or sorry, with reading, or is looking to learn or improve their English, whether that's you or a friend, um, if they would like to get more information on how they can get help, uh, they can go to our website at www.literacymidsouth.org, or you can call or text 901-327-6000. That's 901-327-6000. Call or text that number. We will get you. Uh, we will get you working with a tutor who can help you with whatever your goal is. All right, that is it for today's episode of Literacy Lunch with Lee. I will look forward to seeing you Monday, same time, same place. We will do some more idioms at that point in time. So, until that time comes. See you next time.